I want to turn now to Japan and the nuclear crisis that many fear is on the cusp of becoming a full-blown nuclear catastrophe. Let's remind everybody what the stakes are. This is Fukushima. That's where the damaged reactors are. The government in Japan has told people within 19 miles that they either need to get out or to stay indoors. That is 140,000 people. The U.S. government says the danger is actually within 50 miles. That's an additional 2 million people. And 150 miles south of Fukushima, there is Tokyo. 12 million people live in Tokyo. And in a worst case scenario, there is some radioactive danger potentially to the people of Tokyo. So the stakes are enormous. And this morning, we've learned some unsettling things about some danger that is already manifesting to the food supply in Japan. ABC's Jim Shudo is on that story. Jim, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. The Japanese government has been on alert for signs that the radiation has spread outside of that evacuation zone, affecting those millions of people. The government instructing all cities around the country to test not just the air, but the water and the food for signs of radiation, and the early indications are not good. Japanese state television led broadcast today with the alarming news. Radiation has reached the food supply detected in milk and spinach. Officials insisted the levels posed danger only over a lifetime of consumption. But at Tokyo's fish market, shopkeepers and shoppers expressed real fear. The impact of the radiation scare, said this man, could last a decade. Rushing to control a growing crisis, workers swarmed over the crippled Fukushima plant, hosing reactor number three in efforts to continue cooling it. Reactors three and four believed to be the most at risk of a complete meltdown. Workers did manage to restore cooling functions at reactors five and six. The danger here spent fuel rods heating up. And they've attached an electrical cable to the plant. But even with power, doubts remain as to whether some of the cooling pumps were too damaged in the quake and tsunami to work. If the reactors continue to overheat, the results could be catastrophic. On Friday, brave firefighters departed Tokyo for the plant, knowing full well they could be on a suicide mission. Some of the plant workers who were able to escape are now telling their stories. This man was just outside the plant when the quake hit. I thought the building would be stronger, he said. I could never have imagined it would turn out like this. And then there was this scene, the head of the plant breaking down in public under the emotional weight of the crisis. The Japanese government raising its assessment of this crisis to a level five on a scale of a seven, admitting in effect that it's worse than they previously acknowledged. And after all this criticism of the government for not moving fast enough, even Japanese government officials now are saying they could have, they should have moved faster. And Dan, of course, the hope is it's not too late.